Hey everyone, and welcome to this session. Thank you for taking your time and listening to me discussing how to build an MVP, a minimum viable product. I'm your host for the session, Khaled al Um, I've worked in many big tech companies in the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa, and more recently within Amazon. In today's session, I'll focus more on my own experience in building MVPs, my own thought process, and um, the actual steps that I would take when considering building uh, an MVP. So uh, we will be start discussing and answering the main question. What do we mean by an MVP? When to build it and how to build it? At the very end, I will be discussing more of the open questions that either we came, it, it came to our mind or we always ask it when we were colleagues and friends and reading about uh, MVPs. So let's get into it. What do we actually mean by an MVP, a minimum viable product? As Eric defined it, uh, the author of the Lean Startup book, is that it's that version of a new product which allows a team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about customers uh, with the least uh, effort. So we can translate from that is that the, expect, the expected outcome of MVP is to confirm whether the product idea will target the right user, solve a user problem, and generate revenue. The main takeaway here, and the main focus for us is that an MVP, it translates to collecting the maximum amount of validating learning. Why is that very important? Why, we, why do we need to validate the learning? Because it also relates to when do we need to build the MVP. As, P, as PMs, we're very, very familiar with the product lifecycle. And here where it's come an MVP. Since we want to validate learning, that means we want to enter a market. We have something that we really want to know, is it working or not um, from the definition? Uh, we need to answer, is it the right uh, users? Is it the right uh, problem? Is it the right market? So building an MVP should always focus when we're trying to introduce um, uh, a new concept in the market. At the end of the session, we'll also tap and discuss, is MVP good or okay to implement it as a concept in the uh, later stages of the product lifecycle. And why do we really need to focus on the introduction stage? Because we need the product market fit. What do we mean by, by the product market fit? Is that as Mark uh, defined it, the product market fit means finding a good market with a product capable of satisfying the market. So it's always about combining two main areas. As PMs, we, our main focus always is to find that product market fit, maintain it, and grow from there. Um, as Dan Olson uh, in his uh, book, The Lean Product Playbook, um, uh, mentioned it and explained it uh, very well, is that we have a product which is uh, a part, uh, which is like uh, a group of UX feature set and the main value proposition. On the other hand, we have the market itself, the underserved uh, needs, and the target customer. Our main focus is to combine that. And how we will combine that is through market validation. That's why it's very important in the early stage of the product life cycle. And that's why it's very important to keep uh, the maximum validated learning at mind and always iterate and always, always, always capture um, the, um, the lesson learned in order to achieve the market fit. So, the main keywords that we have so far is that maximum learnings and product market fit and market validation. There's multiple ways of doing the market validation. So if you flip the coin, it will also translate to testing, experimentation. Um, hence, we have many concepts of market validation and testing. Uh, with the, the very minimum of it is the proof of concept. It can be either one line of code, uh, uh, one component, the minimum way of, the, uh, of doing it is just testing an idea very quickly uh, through multiple ways that we will discuss uh, very shortly. The next step of it is a prototype, an actual um, product or a screen that you actually can feel and experience the steps uh, within the idea itself. An MVP, which is our main focus today, it's a group of screens and 
processes and concepts that translate the, the idea itself to the um, end user that we're trying to capture uh, the underserved uh, needs. Once we capture that, that means we have the product market fit, which is the uh, validation of the real value that we think that it's there in the market. Let's explain it more with an uh, example from the real world. So the first example is Dropbox. The way Dropbox created their own MVP is that they basically just created a video demonstrating how the idea will work and just posted the video. Um, it's also called the fake door MVP, which is like the goal of it is that you want to validate the idea without doing any implementation. Um, the second um, MVP concept, or sorry, um, I, uh, implementation that we all familiar with is Airbnb. How Airbnb did it is by uh, using the method concierge uh, MVP. What do we mean exactly by that? Or what they did is that they created a website, then they put their own living room, and the founder themselves replied manually. So. The main idea of how creating this MVP is that you have a screen and all the back end or all the action behind the scenes are manually uh, operated. Uh, Uber, we're all familiar with, with Uber, they use the concept of uh, single feature app MVP. The whole MVP uh, uh, at, at the early stage of uh, Uber was all about one feature only, and it was booking a ride. Groupon, um, Basically, what they did is that the piecemeal MVP focusing on third-party tools, they did not reinvent the wheel. They just used multiple three, three uh, third-party tools to act as the, the whole back end and then test the idea uh, from there. So, so far, we discussed the definition of an MVP that we need to really focus on the learning and gathering or capturing the maximum learning um, uh, and lesson learned. And then from that, keeping that in mind, that means we need to go for the market fit. And in order for us to have the market fit, we need to keep iterating and testing the ideas. And we saw that there's many examples of how we can do it. We do not need um, one of the um, uh, wrong uh, um, ideas available or uh, when we discuss MVP is that that you need to develop um, many screens and many experiences. And it's not the case as we uh, saw. So moving from um, what and when, we will go to how build an MVP. So what I always love to do when I manage products or lead products or even discuss um, what is the way, the proper way of doing a product management. Uh, I always rely on the uh, uh, steps of the concept created by uh, Marty Kagan in his uh, book, Inspired. Uh, and I always use it as my initial homework, the actual thought process that I would need to take before proceeding in any action that I would need. So uh, start asking yourself, exactly what is the problem that we are trying to solve, which translates to the value proposition. For whom do we solve that problem, the target market? And how big is this opportunity, the market size, how we will measure the success, the metrics and the revenue strategy, what alternatives out there, your competitors, your competitive landscape? Um, why are we best suited to pursue this? What is the differentiator that we will really implement and we think that uh, will flip uh, the market. Why now? Is it really important now? Is it important in uh, one year? Or it's too late for us to enter the market with the idea and the problem that we're thinking that we want to solve. How we will get this product to market? How we will enter the market? Are we focusing on penetrating? Are we doing um, uh, market effect, uh, channel strategies, and all of that? Uh, what factors are critical to success? What, exact, what is exactly the feature sets? What is the components of the product that we really need to develop? And if you have all this answer, then you will know it's go or no go. So once you go and answer all of this, it's your pre-work before even discussing that you have an idea and a concept that you want to test. This should be your initial step 
that will answer for you do you, uh, is it worth it to invest or not because as we defined it mvp it's all about testing it's all about market validation that means there's an effort even if just even if you're just creating an mvp that is similar to dropbox uh, 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 concept where they just created a video it's still an investment it's still work so if you did if you did this initial homework then you can start discussing mvp itself you did it you know that you want to build an mvp now as done uh, also in the lean product playbook um, uh, discuss it this is the uh, hypothesis design test methodology there's a hypothesis hypo uh, that you need to create design and test and learn so let's discuss it one by one so you, st you need to start determining your target customers which you already did in your homework identify the underserved customer needs which will be translate to your value proposition now you will deep dive even more not just high level you will start creating your hypotheses you have your problem and you think these problems it's important to this target customers and you think you will solve it by these feature sets so i have hypothesis one and and a sub hypothesis of it is a and b and c i have hypothesis two and a and b and c and so on and so on and so on until you cover a 360 uh, point of view of the actual problems and the target user and the market always keeping these three directions across uh, in front of your eyes you developed your hypothesis you now putting the kind of solution that will cover this you will put your priority and then you start creating your mvp prototype when what do we mean here by prototype it, it's not really need that you um, you need to build for example as in the example the opera example a one feature mvp it can be a dropbox uh, prototype regardless of the type that you want to use focus on how you will test your idea there is no one right way of doing it it's the best way and the, the most famous phrase for npms it depends on the actual uh, problem that you're trying to solve solve uh, and then once you developed your main hypothesis uh, the feature set that you think and the prototype then you will start testing it with your uh, customers and main um, most important um, the main important point here is that iterate and pivot to improve the product market fit you put your success measurement you put your hypothesis and you put your solution and now you're testing do not be fooled that from the very first iteration that there's a good feedback that you have done it and you have that market fit the whole uh, the whole discussion about market fit is so deep that it's uh, parked for a later time but i really advise everyone to keep iterating even if you have good measurement if even if you have good feedback keep doing keep doing and keep shifting all your hypotheses until you know that you captured the real uh, honest uh, um, feedback so so far what we discussed is that what do we really mean by an mvp uh, and it translated to the main focus of learning experience it's all about experimentation when is the best time to implement an mvp when you have a new idea when you want to launch something new in the market when you don't have any clue or any answer of is it really going to be used by the market and the user which translate to the product market fit which is our main goal when we're trying to enter a new market do we really know the market do we really know that it's worth it once we have all of that that means we have an idea of how we will proceed next then we discussed the main concepts uh, and the main actual steps of doing it or how i do it and the way of um uh, uh, it supported me and helped me across my experience i always start by doing the actual homework and then once i do that i know that it's worthy of the investment to move to the next step and then always focus on your hypothesis listen to the market keep iterating and updating your hypotheses so Let's, let's have a different discussion now and think about different ways of when, when we do start doing the actual work. So the very first question, is MVP only for products or we can apply it on features? It's an interesting question and I had many discussions uh, um, on this topic itself. 
There's two school of thoughts. This is how I see it. One, one school are mentioning or are saying is that it's in the name itself. Since we're talking about a product, that means it should only focus on products. MVP, uh, minimum viable product, it's something that it will require a lot of investment. It will require a lot of thought process. It should focus only on the really big ideas. On the other hand, we have uh, the second group of uh, PMs, or you can call it a school, is that they are saying that at the end of the day, it's an idea, regardless if it's a feature or a product or any kind of label that you will put, you're trying to test something. I'm with this second uh, thought, because as I mentioned at the beginning, at the end of the day, it's an idea. Flip the coin, it's a hypothesis. You really do not know if it will work or not. And my advice from my own experience, you're not the user. Even if you are the most experienced or the most senior um, a person in your organization, you're not the user. Always test your idea with them. That means build your hypotheses and go from there. Sometimes you have a product, and now where it's come the discussion about the product life cycle. You have a product already in the maturity stage or in the growth, a growth stage. So your product is up and running, but you want to improve from there. You want to advance. You want to beat your competitor or you want to spin off or whatever the kind of strategy that you want to do. That means you always have new ideas. So should you not follow the best way of testing your hypothesis just because it's not a product? Sometimes you just need to create a new concept, a new feature, a new component. And the same exact steps that we did, it can be still applied. This is the beauty of product management and the beauty of testing and experimentation. At the end of the day, you can sculpt it, mold it uh, the, uh, as the best way that you see uh, fit. One of the main important questions and we always struggle with as PMs is that how to prioritize. We'll always get into discussion, this important, no, that is important. None of this is important. We should focus on that. My advice here is that focus on the best prioritization model that fits the need at hand. Do not use one framework that you think that it will fit your whole experience, your whole um, development life cycle. Depending on the stage you're in, use the best framework that supports you on that. Once you have it, align with your stakeholders, make sure that they understand why you chose that specific prioritization model. Once you do that, then it's a matter of applying it to your hypotheses and to your features. When you do that, you'll start testing and keep iterating. It's like a closed loop. Once you have the feedback, you will know that you did not prioritize well, or you you focused on one area, in one area more than the other. Then it's a matter of just flipping, flipping, flipping until you reach the the stage that it's mature, your model it's mature enough and it's covering the need um, at hand. One of the most interesting um, discussions about MVP is that we often hear that there is also MMP an MLP, a minimum viable product, what we know, uh, what all of us uh, know it, um, minimal marketable product, minimum lovable product. Uh, it's also another uh, deep topic that will be part for later, but let me paint the picture for you with this example. Um, let's say that you defined all of what we discussed, and now it's all about to what level of development that you will create for your product. I'm not even called at this stage an MVP or MMM or MLP. Let's say, for example, within your customer experience, there's sign up emails. Your end user will sign up and then will receive emails. There's different ways of how to implement the email. It can start uh, uh, by just a simple text and it's HTML or a fancy way of doing it with videos and very advanced way of um, sending an email. You can develop it yourself, you can use a third party, you can automate the whole experience. These choices, it will fit in what area you defined your approach in the, in, the, in, in the product development itself. So when we say minimum viable product, it's mean the very minimum least efforts. So if the email itself, the sign up email, it's not part of your hypothesis, 
it's just a matter of a part of the whole customer experience and it's not affecting uh, your the problem solving and the hypothesis and all of the and your um, metrics for example if it's not affecting the conversion the um, the whole um, uh, um, hypothesis that you built then you you might just say uh, at this stage I'll just make it as a plain text it's not wrong because it's not the main focus of what you're trying to test you're trying to test your hypothesis so whatever it's outside your hypothesis it can be an MVP. There's no need to build something that fancy of it. If you find yourself saying, no, I needed to make it better because what I'm trying to build already available in the market and they do it in a certain way, I cannot be below them, then it can be a marketable um, uh, minimal uh, product. In other words, I don't need it to be a pure text email. It can be HTML. I can have my brand colors, the logo, and everything. I even might even use a third party um, uh, and invest more uh, in an email list or uh, uh, whatever can fit the scenario that you have at hand. The lovable product is that, no, I'm having a video design. I'm having animation. I'm having something that emotionally will connect with the user that I'm trying to test um, uh, with. So imagine it this way, it's a spectrum. Anything that is not affecting the main hypothesis, because without a doubt, it, you, you need to test it with the proper and most way. Anything around it, you can decide whether you want to focus as a, a very minimum way of doing it, just testing the viability of it. No, I want it to be marketable, that I can go, um, uh, with confidence, uh, with confidence to anyone and say, look to my product and across the whole CX, lovable where I will connect emotionally. Um, let's close the example with, I can simply say that high name instead of saying hi and that's it or hi customer or dear customer. Uh, this can be within the MVP. If I want to make connection and, and then I'll focus on those small details uh, doing it. So uh, as a takeaways, the MVP is really a powerful concept. And the beauty and the power of it is that you're validating the hypothesis in a more faster way. You have many questions at your hand, uh, sorry, uh, at your mind. Um, is it really worth it to build it in this way? Should we focus on this segment rather than that? Should we focus on this market rather than that? Should we use this technology rather than that technology? All these questions. You should always, always, always address it, not just by going directly uh, developing it or not just by voting or prioritization. Always, always, always start with the hypothesis and then experiment your hypothesis. Experimentation is a very, 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 very important topic uh, uh, and for us as PMs to have it in our toolbox. So an MVP is one way of validating uh, this hypothesis. Um, don't be overprotective of your MVP process. Be flexible, adapt, and optimize where needed. Sometimes, as PMs, we will fall in this mistakes on overprotective or over uh, ownership uh, of saying that, no, it's a process. This is how I want to do it. This is how I do it for many reasons and many issues that we might encounter while we develop, whether it's going that politics, whether it's going to be issues with the development, marketing, business, etc., etc., etc. Be humble. Listen for others, from others. Listen from your customers. Listen for the feedback and optimize where needed. Maybe you will find yourself building an MVP where you should focus on building an MLP. Maybe you will find yourself so focused on one area of your hypothesis that you need just to flip it and focus on the area. Be open for criticism, be open for discussions, um, be open for optimizing uh, where it's needed. Uh, as we mentioned, there is so many way on testing a hypothesis. What I've shared today is that the concepts and the best way that I solve it for my, the ex my experience and where I was, leading and the challenges and I face it, I, I, I face it. But at the same time, I was very flexible of adapting and change. Sometimes I'll just focus more on discovery because it's a pure new idea. Sometimes I just focus on delivery because 
it, it's, it's challenging how we should make it um, um, uh, uh, from a technical perspective really mature. Maybe the whole idea and the whole value proposition of my product, of my, uh, of my hypothesis is that performance, it's a key. We can offer the same as our competitors, but our key differentiator is that um, our CX is seamless, seamless, and our value is it's all about the responsive of the app of the RDI itself. Um, selecting the most suitable MVP, we tapped on it a little bit. I'll close this thought by saying that there's so many ways of doing it. We saw how Opera, um, uh, Airbnb, Dropbox did it. Try the best that fits your challenge, your problem, the, um, sometimes the budget that you have at hand, and the team and the skills that you have at hand. Sometimes you would need to work with your team rather than forcing them to use a specific technology. Remember, at the end of the day, you're testing a hypothesis. You're not trying to prove um, the power of your team or your company. If you can do both, then this be, uh, it's a really great uh, um, achievement. Building an MVP, it's a, continu a continuous process. Keep improving until you reach the product market fit. Again, it's about validating the market. It's all about testing your hypothesis, keep listening, keep iterating until you find it. From a practical experience, it's really important to keep com uh, communication uh, or communicating with your own stakeholders. So build fixed checkpoints across the, your main stakeholders for review and feedback, where you will discuss the performance of your MVP, the success metrics that you um, selected personally and with your stakeholders, and sharing the feedback that you received from your end customers and the internal feedback. It's really important. Choosing the checkpoint, it can be quarterly, uh, monthly, weekly. Again, it depends on the product uh, situation that you have at hand. Don't worry if, if your MVP fails, because this is what we need to do. This is what we aim to get. Not failing exactly, but the feedback that will improve and allow us to iterate our product and what we are trying um, to achieve. Always, always, always be open to pivot. Always be open to kill your idea and switch. Because again, at the end of the day, what we are aiming is that listening from our um, end users or target uh, customers. Um, I. I'll close with this. There's it's, there's a, a really um, great uh, books to read and articles. I really advise ev uh, everyone to read the Lean Product Playbook. I, I tapped um, uh, on it today in this uh, talk uh, in, in, in various ways. Uh, also validating product ideas. This is a really great book where it will show you the actual steps of how you should reach your audience. And depending on the stage where you're at, whether it's you, you're trying to, to create a focus group, or whether you're trying to validate the market, whether you're trying to validate the hypothesis itself, it's a really interesting uh, book and definitely um, inspired by Marty uh, uh, Kagan. Um, I use it as my initial thoughts of how to build products. Uh, the Lean Startup will show a different way from Dan Olson. Uh, of creating an MVP. As I mentioned, there's so many concepts, there's so many ways, there's so many steps. It's all about using the right one um, for your product and your um, idea. Uh, some really interesting articles. I, um, I discussed few of the MVP types. I encourage everyone to go and read type of products uh, and type of product MVPs to know about. One interesting um, article that will really let you go to the stage of deep thinking of, do you really think the right way of your problem? Is that stop asking what problems are we trying to solve? Uh, lastly, uh, MLP versus MVP versus MMP. I really um, uh, encourage everyone to go and read it. Uh, I discussed a little bit of it today, but it's a very deep and long uh, discussion. So always remember, the value is in what gets used, not in what gets built. Keep it, keep it always in your mind. MVP, 
at the end of the day, it's a concept that you can implement, but it's not the only thing that you should do. It's not the only thing that you should focus on, and it's not the only way of testing or creating products. Because more recently, we're starting to see it as a, um, a trend, as a must. Uh, our part is to educate the stakeholders that we work with. Uh, our part is to um, take the right decision uh, and choose the right way of testing your hypothesis. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for listening. Would really love to discuss more with you. Please feel free to reach out through like LinkedIn. Uh, if you have any uh, feedback, discussions, or questions that you would love me to answer. Thank you, everyone.